MIA. I'm going to briefly talk about the dead horse in the middle of the room that everyone walks around and no one wants to talk about. We've been seeing that for the last year, the past year. Too many people have vanished, whether they've been censored off of platforms or they've just gotten sick and worst, they have. And we're not allowed to talk about it. It is ignored. Those who do not study history are doomed to have it repeat, to have it happen to them. The question is, do you have sovereignty? When I was in university studying economics, I learned about the Wilmart Republic. This was the republic based on laws that was formed in Germany after World War I. It had the best constitution in all of Europe. However, it had one flaw. If there was a crisis, their rights could be suspended. Now, there was the burning of the Reichstag, which was perpetrated by the Nazis. And that is how Hitler was able to use the apparatus of a great country that had a great constitution and use it against itself to perpetrate some of the greatest crimes that ever happened in humanity. First, people's rights were taken away, citizenship, and then their lives. Well, they also implemented something called the Gesundheit Pass. So they said, the Nazis, that there was a typhoid epidemic. So they issued a paper to people who were clean. And those who did not have the pass were segregated from society. You know, history doesn't exactly repeat itself, but it sure rhymes. What also occurred is people were not allowed to speak the obvious. And that's what makes a free country. That's what makes free men and women. To be able to discuss the hard issues, whether you agree with them or not, they have the ability to talk. I want to share with you about my experiences with MIA, Missing in Action. I'm having a problem right now in making long-term plans for my business. I had two people in the last year that I was planning to do business with. And one of them died of long, you know what they call it. I'm not going to say it because I don't want to be censored. They passed away. They also participated in the experiment. You get that? And soon after, they passed. Well... I was supposed to be in Ethiopia right now. The gentleman I was going with came back from Ethiopia. We were going to do business. We were looking at selling several thousand cows and helping develop their educational system through an educational platform and a number of other opportunities. This individual came back to Canada and within days was fortunate that a blood clot was found that got stuck in their knee. This person had participated in the experiment and they gave him blood thinners. He was in the hospital for a week. We were planning our trip with several other people and he vanished a month ago. just dropped off the face of the earth. I can't help but look up <laughs> death notices in the paper because there's no reason for this person to disappear. We were planning business. No one that I know who knows this individual has heard from this individual. This is concerning. Because my question is, how do we plan? I was a financial planner. When you're planning, there's three scenarios you have to address. 
for it to be a good plan. The best case scenario, if everything worked out, where will you be? The status quo, if you keep on doing what you do, where will you be? In the worst case scenario, if everything was to go batshit, what would occur? And how have you prepared to mitigate? That's a big concern for me right now because my question is, how does one plan? So many people that I know have had serious issues. I was speaking to a woman who shared with me that every woman that she knows who participated had menstrual issues, massive amounts of blood. No one's allowed to talk about it. No one is talking about the fact that currently there's a half a billion people on this planet that are on the verge of starvation. That puts any sickness or flu or whatever, and no one wants to discuss what caused it because there were tons of plans. They knew if they shut down everything, things would eventually break because in a modern society, we are interdependent on each other. Very few of us grow food and make our own clothing. So the question that I'm having again and again is how do I plan? Because if I plan with people who participated, in the back of my mind, my question is, will they be there in the future? And I know that's very uncomfortable to ask, but I'm asking that question because it freaks me out. Yes, I go about my day trying to ignore it, to push it really deep down, and I ignore it. But how can I, when I keep on reading that people who've been in remission for cancer, it just happens. Two members of my family, very close, have cancer right now. They didn't have it before. It just popped up. And they're told that they don't know how it happened. Well, they participated in something. When I was a kid and I used to watch Sesame Street, they used to talk about basic logic one of these things doesn't belong, you know, and they would show, let's say, three squares and one triangle. So what has been introduced into society, into the population that wasn't there before? I have put off making this video because I was hoping my suspicions were wrong about the MIAs, people who are disappearing. And there's little talks that people have, very quiet. They don't want to say it out loud because, God forbid, they get named a conspiracy theorist. You know how that came about, that word? It was the CIA after the Kennedy assassination. They realized that to silence people from asking uncomfortable questions, they were going to name them conspiracy theorists. Well, you know what the difference between a conspiracy before March 2020 and now? Well, now, a conspiracy theory, in fact, the difference is two weeks. So much that we were told to ignore, we're now finding it's truthful. Our suspicions are right. If you go on to... Stats Canada, or you look at the U.S. Census, or you start looking on medical sites, you'll find the truth. Not only that, if you go into some of these organizations that are supposed to be concerned for our well-being, you find out that you can't help but think that maybe these organizations believe in eugenics. I had an opportunity to spend some time on the Rockefeller Foundation. And there's some interesting stuff there. Pretty scary. You can't write this stuff. And I spent time reading UN Agenda 21 and UN Agenda 30. They don't like us too much. And and when I say us, I say useless eaters. I was disgusted in 2021 when I saw Prince Charles state that we have to spend more money our money, not his, because he's never done anything to fight climate change. Well, many people don't know that climate has always changed. They know that. It rains. 
However, global warming hasn't happened since 2000, so they had to change global warming to climate change. And here's an individual who's never had to work in his life, and his life is not going to be changed, telling us how to live. Now, who was his father? Prince Philip. He was a genesist. He was one of the founding members of the Club of Rome that came out and said that we have to drastically reduce the human population. And this person, his son, acts concerned. Prince Philip also said that he wanted to come back as a virus to kill everyone. Here's someone who had nothing but disdain for you, I, and everyone you've known. So, I'm asking the question, and I want you to share your stories. Who's gone in your life MIA? They've gone missing. They've been deplatformed. Their voices have been taken away. They have gotten sick out of nowhere and died. These are the uncomfortable discussions that need to happen. And I'm going to share with you that I'm concerned because I want to conduct business. I love business. I love the trade. I love the connections. Right now, I have to ask myself the question, will there be a tomorrow? Because when there is no tomorrow, people do not save, they do not invest. They live for the moment. They become heathenistic. I'm going to share with you a story or an experience that some of you might be uncomfortable hearing. When I was in planning, I only liked working with people, men and women, who had children. Pretty drastic, right? You know why? Because people who have children have an investment in the future. They do things that are responsible because they have to think outside themselves and they are invested in the world being here and being better for generations to come than those who don't. So I have a radical thought. I think people who have more children should actually get more old age security because they've made sacrifices and basically our economy and our social system is built upon you paying taxes and you contributing children so later on those children will become workers and those workers will be able to keep the infrastructure going. Well too many people haven't contributed and that is people who happen to be in leadership positions. For example, Merkel, she has no children. Micaron of France has no children. They have no investment in the future other than the now. So these are just my thoughts. My request is this. If anyone that you know has gone MIA, they're no longer here, share. I want to know. Because right now, everything's antidotal. Because I can't go and actually listen to the official narrative and hear the truth. And it impacts my life and yours. It impacts my career. It impacts our economy. It impacts humanity. And I believe humanity is worth something. And so are you. And so are those people. And their stories need to be told and shared. Because through doing that, we're going to wake up to the fact that there's something wrong in Kansas. 